This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Chem Power, and a better route planner. Yo, what's up? We are now at Ayondi Dal, and behind me here you see the Audi e-tron GT. Oh, finally, I get to test this. This is unfortunately just the regular version, not the GT RS, but this is the range test, so it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, but man, let's let's take a look at this. This is probably one of the sexiest EVs on the market today until Roadster is out. Uh, except that I just happened to get this color. Last time it was, uh, well, I mean, it's at least a slightly better color this time. <laughs> but for me though, I would like to have the, maybe, maybe the white or the red one or something. So uh, what is important for this test is that the, re okay, let's start with the front. The front tires, Goodyear, Eagle F1, it says over there, if you're interested. And the front is 265, 35, 21. Oh, I just noticed the 35 is in the front. And the back is 305, 30, 21. You see, I managed to just align up this one, this inscription on top with that inscription on top. You see? Just had to spin the wheels a little bit to get them aligned. <laughs> but man, does this car look good? So I'm gonna show the back. I should have brought a chair. Uh, I'm not sure which part do you like the most. I like the back part here a lot. I just look at these fat tires. 305 tires. They are about as fat as two i3 tires. <laughs> yeah, two i3 is 155 width. But I think my favorite part, my favorite angle is probably from here, roughly. Here, oh yeah, yeah, look at this, oh yeah. Man, I should have brought a chair. Just sit down and wait, and just watch the car from this angle. Mm -mm -mm. I can show you inside, by the way. It, it resembles Taycan in some ways, when it comes to drivetrain and battery, but the interior, yeah, okay. Sunlight, great. We have these uh, semi-bucket seats in the back. We have panorama, or glass roof. On this side, yeah, but it's not the same as, an, as a Taycan because here you actually have button overlord. Yes, what did I say? O button overlord. Well, that's also good enough uh, impression of this. Just lots of buttons and then only two screens. The e-tron, well, the e-tron SUV or whatever you call it, has three screens. This one has only two screens. So in a way, I feel like it's not that exclusive compared to the the other e-tron, the, the, the Volkswagen e-tron, you know? Like we have tons of them in Norway. But okay, so uh, it's Friday afternoon. What's the time now? 13, yeah, so I'm going to do the 90 kilometers per hour test first and then the 120. And outside it is, what is the temperature outside? Wait, oh there, 19 degrees Celsius outside. Nice. Oh yeah, we on the move now. We have some uh, traffic, weekend traffic, but I found out I had to cruise at 96 kilometers per hour for to have mid match 90. <laughs> but also, you know, when you see this screen, you're thinking, oh, you're just driving a regular e-tron. No, this is the e-tron GT, the expensive one. But you don't feel it because the screens are more or less the same. <laughs> well, let's see. Front axle. 1,220, that's like an i3. Wait, 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 1,200, I just lost 20 kilos. The whole car. What? 2,420, uh, 2,420. <laughs> what the heck? What is it, this? Is it the uh, German Panzer in here? Well, let's check out how is Mjösen today. Ah, well, it's 15.5 degrees Celsius over here. Uh, not too much wind. A li little bit of headwind seems like. Hmm, okay. Ah, that's good. Okay, we are now at Rudshögda, or maybe I should call it Rudshögden. <laughs> so it's supposed to be 91 kilometers here. 
trip meter says 90.3, so it seems like the trip meter is quite accurate. Oh, 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 there's no region here though. I mean, I have, I have paddle shifters, but they're not doing anything. <laughs> and the region is set to manual, but it still doesn't do anything. So uh, Audi, they just want people to use the brake pedal for no reason, because the brake pedal enables a region anyway. And also the whole brake pedal feel uh, with region is kind of weird. It doesn't feel, it, it feels a bit choppy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's raining a little bit over here, but it just started one kilometer from here. So most of the time we have dry road. And the consumption right now is 174, but we are in the highlands. It'll be Tynlufta. Yeah. We're getting close to Espa, and the sun is pretty much above us right now. And you see, the problem with the e-tron GT is that it has piano finish all over the place. Piano finish there, over here, in here and some chrome over here that reflects a lot kind of hard to show you in picture but on the, on the camera but when the sun has the right angle i get blinded all the time it just reflects right in my face i can't even see it now yeah like something like this just to give you an idea so the first thing i would do if i would buy this car is to just wrap all the piano finish with some matte uh, film because not only does it reflect you in the sunlight but also over here you see all the fingerprints and the micro scratches again it's gone now yeah for now yeah well you still kind of see it in also in artificial light so why did they put piano finish in this car oh. we are back at dawn now and according to um, well according to real life uh, experience the distance at the roundabout is supposed to be 182 kilometers Oh, this car now reports 181.4, 181.5. Okay, so it's slightly under-reporting, but it's so little that in this case, I'm not going to bother. You, you can actually hear the electric motor at low speed. Did you hear that when you regen? regen? Okay, 181.7 over here. Yeah, that's pretty spot on. Slight under-reporting, but that's like 0.1% under-reporting only. Okay, let's go back, 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 back. Consumption is 176 watt hour per kilometer here. Okay. We are getting close to the turnaround point again, and we've been driving for four hours now, see? Consumption is 174, okay, not too bad. I was expecting higher, but I guess even with fat tires, it's still okay. Yeah, so uh, you see that we have 123 kilometers left, so we'll be getting something close to the VLTP range of 380, I think it was, no, I don't know, sorry. It was 488 kilometers, if I remember correctly, on this car. But it's Friday afternoon right now, and also it's a long weekend because Monday is a public holiday, so you see lots of traffic on passing cars. Uh, I hope I can do the 120 test but I will do the 120 test in about one and a half hours. So hopefully by then the traffic would have calmed down a bit. We're back at the starting point and wow. So this car is consumed only 173 watt hour per kilometer. I was expecting more given the fat tires. Uh, and you see that we, we drive 490 kilometers. Uh, but uh, strangely enough, the energy we got out of it this time is 84.6 kilowatt hour. Last year when I tested Taycan, uh, I was getting 86 to 87 kilowatt hour, but it was warmer in the outside. So maybe that's why, because this car should have the exact same battery as a Taycan with a big battery. So now I need to recharge up a little bit before the 120 test. And as usual, no range test is complete before uh, trying to open this uh, there, there, there carefully open it no range test is complete until you have some holy guacamole yes mexican well it's um it's a salad yeah it's just a salad a taco salad right we're on the move now high speed run it's 11 minutes past eight and uh, yeah i forgot to mention that uh, monday it's, it's Friday today and Monday is a public holiday. I think it's Pins or something. I stopped paying attention to public holidays now that I don't have an office job anymore. 
But that's why there is so much traffic now because people are going on, on a long weekend. Woohoo! Four day weekend. Yeah, kind of. But uh, yes, uh, so because I waited extra time now, then we don't have too much traffic. So I've only been stuck behind a leaf once, that's it. So most of the test now is quite clean. Yeah, running at 120. Oh, that's a weird looking cloud. It looks like a like a gas pump. You see the nozzle to the <laughs> nozzle on top there? Huh. Once you've seen it, you cannot unsee it. We are back again, charging, and then the result for this time is that actually to my big surprise, we only consumed 224 watt hour per kilometer. And average I was 14 degrees. It wasn't it wasn't the hottest day, but not the coldest day. But that means that we have 378 kilometers of range, given that we get also 84.6. So I didn't bother measuring it because I already tested Taycan many times, and it's the same battery, so we can assume about the same energy. But wow, so it means that uh, if we put smaller wheels on this car, we should be getting about the same range as Taycan. Uh, and then when it comes to Model S. Then the Model S has better range, but then that was a test with the 19 inch wheels. So I guess if you put on 21 inch in Model S, or if even actually, well, if it makes sense to compare it to a performance, but actually it doesn't make sense to compare with performance Model S because uh, the Taycan and then the, the uh, e-tron GT is not the performance versions. It's not the RS or the Turbo S or whatever. But then uh, even Model S will have better range, of course, and lower consumption, but it's around there and I think it must make sense to compare with Model 3 because Model 3 is in a different uh, league when it comes to price and comfort and whatever but space-wise though Model 3 might have more space than this one but yeah is it uh, so yes this is going to be interesting once I do the 1000 kilometer challenge because it's going to be quite a good time but unfortunately we won't have this nice weather anymore but because Taycan oh, I, mean, I was about to say the 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 Audi the, the the e-tron Taycan <laughs> but because the e-tron GT charges so fast it will not be that much affected by uh, consumption yeah I think actually on average I will have around uh, 100 no no close to 200 kilowatt average speed on every charging session but uh, you probably want to know how is the e-tron GT versus Taycan yeah so uh, the impression I have so far is that uh, the e-tron GT from what I remember, you sit higher than the Taycan, and you know GT. It's a GT car, like it's it stands for Grand Theft Auto, right? So uh, it's more like a long trip. Okay, that was a joke, but it was it's more like a long trip touring. So you have more comfortable uh, suspension, not that not for track driving. Uh, but I still think that the interior here is not that nice looking as Taycan, but Taycan is more expensive. But there's one thing I don't like about this one, which is that the center console, like when I'm driving, I will have my hand on the steering wheel and then my elbow will be resting on the center console. And it doesn't have a nice soft place to rest on like it can on most other cars, like even the Model 3. Uh, the Model S though also doesn't have a nice place to rest the elbow. Or maybe you can move the cup holder here. Uh, and then, for example, ID4, ID3, they have the, the adjustable armrest. And yes, of course, any of all sounds adjustable. I didn't know it was adjustable, my mistake. But other than that, though, uh, they are very similar. But I also get the impression that the e-tron GT is noisier than Taycan. But again, we have fat, noisy tires, low profile. So that's why I don't know for sure how it is. Really, but this is a press car, so unfortunately, I can't just go back and ask for smaller wheels. I just get, I'm just happy to get the press car. So, but yes, and I guess there will be. I'm not sure if you guys want me to make a um, an interior review because I already did that last winter, or I mean this winter. I mean uh, it was kind of short, but it already gave you an impression of how it is interior. So, if you guys want it, I'll make a dedicated interior review. Yeah. But I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.